Chinacheva was an awesome historical figure. And not only because he made history, but also because he set very high standards for the interpretation of history. And therefore, his intervention in the history of Africa as a scholar par excellence, as a writer, as a public intellectual, and in some ways an ideologue for the just society. All this mark him out uh, as a man who indeed transformed the way we look at things. The reason people love Professor Chima Achebe, the author of Things Fall Apart, as they often described in, the, in relation to his most successful novel, uh, the novel which have defined him and which has put African fiction on the map, the world map, the literary map, and generally, is because of his ingenuity in the use of language and in storytelling. Besides that, they also love him because of his conscience, because of his integrity. And so, beginning with a project that set out to challenge the representation of Africa in the works of writers from the Western world, uh, it became very clear with his experimentation with Things Fall Apart, his uh, commitment to telling our own story, his commitment to re telling the kinds of stories about Africa that has been put forward by writers, European writers such as Joseph Conrad. He was humility personified. He was a very simple man, a man that uh, exuded integrity in every aspect. And when you were with Chima Achebe, for the brief moments I was privileged to meet him, uh, you had to deal with the fact that in, you were in the presence of an extraordinarily great man, but who also came across as, you know, maybe somebody you, you had known all your life. Working with Pastor Chino Achebe was a privilege. Uh, that's the way I said. I soon realized that it was generally easy working with him as long as you met the kind of standards that he set. Uh, he will give you some. He will give you latitude generally. He give you a certain kind of creative latitude to bring in your own ideas. And I'd seen him repeatedly at meetings, sit quietly and listen to everybody and absorb their various ideas. And because he also understood the significance of uh, what he represented. Uh, he wasn't given to endorsing just anybody, but at the same time, he was very compassionate and he was desirous all the time of supporting young people. So many projects that he had undertaken as ways of giving back include the Center for African Studies, African Writers at Bard College where he was, you know, the Chino Achebe Center. And of course, you know, the Achebe Foundation which had um, undertaken projects that include um, Nigeria, the Meeting of Minds, a series of interviews with distinguished Nigerian uh, public servants, intellectuals, and different technocrats, and different people who have played significant roles in Nigerian history. They are also uh, ongoing right now, they are the, the Igbo Dictionary Project. He also became um, a friend of young people and I'd seen him, not just young people who are writers, or aspiring writers, but also, you know, kids. And by which I mean uh, kids of my daughter's age, who is Kika, who is 13. Um, I see him very comfortable in their midst, telling stories and asking questions and entering into conversations with them. Um, I do have photographs that I took sometime um, 2011 or 12, I'm not so sure now, during the 50th wedding anniversary of um, Chino Achebe where he had all of those kids come into um, the ceremony that he had. Um, these are his grandchildren. Um, he was not imposing in any sense.
Drum beats, there's a response from the community to come together, to heal, to celebrate, and if need be, to confront a threat from the outside. And so when we say drum beats for Iroko, of course, the Iroko is in my in our part of um, Africa is the biggest tree around. And um, it stands out there, big, tall, majestic, protective, inspiring. So you can see the, the, the convergence here. The drum, which could be made out of the Iroko tree, is rendering beats to celebrate the big Iroko tree standing out there that defines the community, that is so central to the life of the community. So, President Dukotina and I thought that a befitting metaphor or symbol for a night in which we're not just mourning his transition, because we do mourn. It doesn't matter if even if he lives over 100 years old, they're still raising to mourn. But more fundamentally and more correctly, we were celebrating his life. We needed to have to beat the drums, to beat the drums to celebrate the great Iroko tree, the, 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 the towering essence of our, of our new African consciousness, the defining symbol of an Africa redeemed and liberated from the self-demeaning Conradian description of the dark continent. And that's how we, how that's what inspired the concept of drum beats for the rock. <laughs> Prosperity, oh, but for those days of bountiful harvests and fertile wombs when the patter of the newborn made music fit for the ears of the gods. The evening was flanned off by Professor Blair Rutherford, the director of the Institute of African Studies, and he had had the opportunity of meeting Professor Achebe when we invited him to Brown as part of the Achebe Colloquium on Africa. And the highlight for me was at the, the very end where, uh, where we had poetry reading, which of course is so, so, so suitable for, for, for Professor Achebe. And he started off the poetry reading by, by reading a poem himself, a poem he wrote uh, in Igbo to uh, his late, uh, to, uh, to his friend, Christopher 
or people. When he read Ipo, um, it sent chills down, down my spine. Now, unlike his friend um, who passed when he was quite, quite young, we had the pleasure and, and, and honor of having Professor Achebe with us for many, many decades. Um, so tonight isn't a lament for the passing, but it's a celebration of, of his life. I was followed by the opening um, remarks by the High Commissioner, uh, who gave also um, a very powerful um, testimony to the man Chino Achebe. I think this is as good an opportunity as any. If it has not been done before, and it's possible it has been done before, and if it has been done before, it needs to be repeated many times over. The incalculable gratitude of all Nigerians to Bayard College and later on Brown University for not only giving the platform where the engineers will continue to do what he best had best to do, but indeed providing the advanced technological support uh, that made it possible for him to continue to function to the highest level that is biology, even without the accident, uh, will have the level he do. I have the privilege of hosting the great Chino Achebe as Cultural Minister of Nigeria when he visited our country, his country in 1999. So at this event that I had the privilege and it gave me great honor to accept that invitation. All of you know uh, the great Roku was a very choosy person and he decided where to go and where not to go. So for me as a young admirer of him, even from the less impressive world of law and politics, that he accepted my invitation as the then Pioneer Minister of Culture and Tourism. Remains for me personally uh, one of the high points of my public career. We had a memorable evening of music, tributes, and citations together with the first and only National Creativity Award with a one million naira check as our token appreciation of a genius who has repossessed our national esteem for us as a people. When China Achebe later invited President Lusegun of Basanjo to his 70th birthday ceremony at Bank College, New York, that brought into the same room Nobel laureates in literature, like our own Wale Shoinka, Anthony Morris. I was asked by the president uh, to be the president's special representative, even though I had just moved, I just been moved in a minor cabinet reshuffle from the pioneering cultural ministry to the more fancy transport ministry. And you know why it's more fancy. She now called from Bad College to express his sadness that I was leaving the cultural ministry. And for me, one of my biggest uh, um, delights, even though I wasn't sure I deserved it, and she now told me not being a company if he didn't make it. And I want for him to tell me on the phone from Bad College, I thought you were doing a good job in cultural ministry. Why are you posting you to transport? Well, I tried to console him. You know, we politicians, we have a way of putting a spin on everything. <laughs> so I told him quickly, and it's amazing how I thought about that answer. I told him, Prof, you know, the Roman civilization was unimaginable without the Appian way. Therefore, I want to believe that I'm going to transport ministry to provide the means for culture. <laughs> where mothers go to battle each day with a baby strapped across their backs. 
Another is still clinging from their breasts. This is child care at its finest. A place of street businessmen who don't need a white collar to make deals. They sign contracts with handshakes. Shirtless, sometimes shoeless, they will show you how to make money, make money, and you will find anything in these streets. From hubcaps to toilet seats, it's been said. If you leave home naked, find yourself caught in the gridlock traffic of Lagos roads, they will have you dressed. Boardroom sharp briefcase in hand between the mainland and the island and a comfortable place of jaw-dropping mansions and face may I face you rooms. Where a child hops goods in the blazing sun next to an air-conditioned Mercedes Benz, there are dichotomies here. With abject poverty chewing at the seams that bind us, but we are the same people who built a city on water, who banned fire and metal to give you art, built empires before the world's first breath. Check your textbook. Better yet, check your encyclopedias, read between the lines, you will find us there, you will find us everywhere. Every continent, every climate, every country, speaking Portuguese, French, Italian, and they call us uncivilized. And we can show you how to perfectly pair with caviar and wine, but still get down, fingers deep in a plate of pounded yam, and I come from a place where the world's best storytellers first spoke, who taught you that you must set forth at dawn. Be no longer at ease with that thing around your neck before things fall apart. So when you ask me where I come from, there are things that I want to tell you that are more colorful than my green passport things, that are heavier than the filled explosive cradled in Mutalab's underpants things, that are more creative than a well-crafted forward night email. You will never understand who I am until you know exactly where it is that I come from. Thank you. I was born into a tribe of intellectual individuals, genuine geniuses encrypted in our genes. We have been genetically modified to spit precious stones and gems like storytelling griots against genocide. And those that choose to generalize Nigerians as the scum of the earth, you can judge this. We've been silenced for far too long. Our lips have been sealed shut for generations by guilt. Guilty for the sudden influx of frequently bouncing fraudulent checks. Check your email. Go check your credit report. We stand tall like solid stone statues, sculptural figures being caressed. Arrested airports. Consequences of carrying a green Nigerian passport with a coat of arms stacked on our foreheads, stamping our passports, entry denied, visa rejected, visa rejected, visa rejected. I was born into a tribe of intellectual individuals. Genuine geniuses, encrypted in our genes. We single-handedly generated more movies than Hollywood over a period of six months. But yet the producers of District 9 will depict Nigerians as alien pimps, pimping prawns, cracking open alien exoskeleton like prawn crackers ingesting raw. Hackers, hired by banks to find flaws in the system. If there are flaws in the system, we will find them. Genuine geniuses encrypted in our genes. We have been genetically modified to spit precious stones and gems like storytelling griots against genocide. And those that choose to generalize Nigerians as the scum of the earth judge this. I am a storyteller tonight. And my story anchors on a man who changed the lives of many. He was the oracle of a generation, and it is at this occasion that I make this dedication to him. You do not have to be a professor to enjoy his work, because his words leave drum beats crackling against your skin. You do not have to be a literary critic to have his words stitching memories into your brain. I mean, I was 13, and now I'm inching on 14, a zip cover teen when I read that he came when I died. And I cried. Tears that left sound traces trickling on my face as I flipped page by page. And I threw the book across the room because how can an author do that to his audience? And anyone can feel a cold pain. The world was shaking and praying that it was not true, that this great man, this rooted tree, had fallen. But he is still standing. He is a genius of our time. And I can't believe I talked to him. When I met him, I had heard things fall apart three times going on four. 
I have witnessed the trials of a nation enclosed in a paperback book. I expected a demanding figure, one that ordered attention. And you should do that. Because in the time I knew him when he spoke, a dime could be heard dropping in the room. His soft words left me trembling in awe and respect. So even though the Iroquois seems to have fallen, he will never be forgotten. And now I understand, I fully comprehend what it means to be a storyteller. Because in every one of his work, beautiful stories were told. And it seems that this is the end of another one. But surely his name lives on. So rest in peace, my literary hero. Rest in peace, Ugonabo. Rest, rest, rest. A minstrel known as Arias Carter, who plays uh, Obo, <laughs> was playing. So uh, Chris Okibo shouted to Tinoa Itube across the lawn, Tinoa, come and see a real poet. We are wasting our time. <laughs> conversations with people and when he wrote his book he transcribed it to, on to uh, the late great James Brown I just want to say uh, very quickly that uh, the great lesson that Chenua Achebe gave all of us every intellectual every writer in the African diaspora is to stay true to our roots respect our roots respect the wisdom of our elders respect the Proverbs be concrete tell the truth be vivid never back down these are the lessons that Chinua Achebe gave to all of us and these are also lessons that inform the great ooh of James Brown so this poem is made up of the titles of James Brown's hits of the late 1950s early 1960s and I call this poem James Brown's rhetoric so here it is. I imagine the guy talking. 
Just talking, rapping, rapping hard. Rap, bud. Rapping, this is it. Yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't be giving away all these secrets. I shouldn't be giving away. Yeah, go to rap. Go to rap. James Brown's rhetoric. Think. I'll go crazy. I know it's true. Baby, you're right. I got to change. It hurts to tell you. I got to feel it. I got to cry. Don't let it happen to me. Please, please. Please, it's a man's world. I've got you bewildered. I won't plead no more. You're mine. You're mine. I'll never, never let Bendo. you go. Upendo. Upendo. Upendo halisi. Upendo unio kamilifu. Eti, upendo uliokamilifu, upendo halisi, ndiyo, 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 upendo kamili. Kwa ingia gani? Kwa namna gani? Kivipi? Kwa umbo gani? Mimi siyelewi. Ah, lakini, minao, unao, and now it was an eclectic night the, the, the kind of night a night of renaissance a, 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 a night of extraordinary art and culture a, a night that that showed the bubbling essence of africanness one could see the ego of eagles perching on on the Iroko somewhere observing all that we were doing that night and just lapping it all with his wings in excitement and joy that truly death does not create any barrier uh, that arts cannot penetrate. I had some people telling me that uh, for some of them who had lived in Ottawa for up to 20 years and above, some of them said they had never experienced anything like that in Ottawa and that it was indeed historic. Many of them attributed it to the spirit of Chinua Achebe um, as a force, as a positive force that brings people together, that also promotes African culture and advancement. Uh, personally, I was fulfilled being an oral head for the event because there was such a short time to organize it. Uh, it did seem daunting at the beginning. How were we to put together such an event just within two weeks? But it turned out that between um, celebrating a man uh, for whom uh, many see as a quintessential artist in terms of his craft and also in terms of his integrity and social conscience, it was very easy to identify with him. And so many other artists that I contacted, some of whom I have had the privilege of meeting very closely, were happy to be part of the event. And many of them made sacrifices to be here. Some of them had to give up earlier appointments. You know, some of them had to come here, you know, within very difficult schedules. Um, whereas in a couple of other events, um, you will see people in different asides or not focusing from the very beginning to the end this was an engaged audience all of them seemed to be so eager to take out of the event and more importantly they braved a terrible weather that day in Ottawa it was snowing all day uh, and then it wasn't just a regular kind of um, um, flurries or those kind of snow that are easy to manage it was a combination of freezing rain of ice uh, pellets and there was this snow that the, the floor was slippery. Uh, the ground was slippery, the roads were slippery. And initially we were wondering if that event was going to be attended at all. But it's a testimony to um, how important that event was to people, how important the man we're celebrating was that we had a full hall. Uh, this was a combination of Nigerians in Canada and also um, 
different people of different nationalities and members of the cartoon community. All of them defied the weather.